Noise regulation includes statutes or guidelines relating to sound transmission established by national, state or provincial and municipal levels of government. After the watershed passage of the United States Noise Control Act of 1972, other local and state governments passed further regulations. A noise regulation restricts the amount of noise, the duration of noise and the source of noise. It usually places restrictions for certain times of the day. Although the UK and Japan enacted national laws in 1960 and 1967 respectively, these laws were not at all comprehensive or fully enforceable as to address generally rising ambient noise, enforceable numerical source limits on aircraft and motor vehicles or comprehensive directives to local government. History equals United States initial legislation equals, in the 1960s and earlier, few people recognized that citizens might be entitled to be protected from adverse sound level exposure. Most concerted actions consisted of citizens groups organized to oppose a specific highway or airport, and occasionally a nuisance lawsuit would arise. Things in the United States changed rapidly with passage of the National Environmental Policy Act in 1969 and the Noise Pollution and Abatement Act, more commonly called the Noise Control Act, in 1972. Passage of the NCA was remarkable considering the lack of historic organized citizen concern. However, the United States Environmental Protection Agency had testified before Congress that 30 million Americans are exposed to non-occupational noise high enough to cause hearing loss and 44 million Americans live in homes impacted by aircraft or highway noise. NEPA requires all federally funded major actions to be analyzed for all physical environmental impacts including noise pollution and the NCA directed the EPA to promulgate regulations for a host of noise emissions. Many city ordinances prohibit sound above a threshold intensity from trespassing over property line at night, typically between 9 p.m. to 7 a.m., and during the day restricts it to a higher sound level. However, enforcement is uneven. Many municipalities do not follow up on complaints. Even where a municipality has an enforcement office, it may only be willing to issue warnings, since taking offenders to court is expensive. A notable exception to this rule is the city of Portland, Oregon, which has instituted an aggressive protection for its citizens with fines reaching as high as $5,000 per infraction, with the ability to side a responsible noise violator multiple times in a single day. Equals Japan equals, Japan actually passed the first National Noise Control Act, but its scope was much more limited than the U.S. law, addressing mainly workplace and construction noise. Equals follow up on initial U.S. laws equals, initially these laws had a significant effect on thoughtful study of transportation programs and also federally funded housing programs in the United States. They also gave states and cities an impetus to consider environmental noise in their planning and zoning decisions, and led to a host of statutes below the federal level. Awareness of the need for noise control was rising. In fact, by 1973 a national poll of 60,000 U.S. residents found that 60% of people considered street noise to have a disturbing, harmful or dangerous impact. This trend continued strongly throughout the 1970s in the U.S., with about half of the states and hundreds of cities passing substantive noise control laws. Noise regulation subsided sharply in 1981, when Congress ended funding for the NCA. EPA has preempted lower levels of government from regulating sources, so states could not legislate standards such as for truck noise emissions. Thus, in areas where the federal government had failed to promulgate clear standards, no further progress could be made except by the Federal Aviation Administration, which is an inherent conflict of interest regarding noise regulation. Nevertheless, some states continued to act. California carried out an ambitious plan to require its cities to establish a noise element of the general plan, which provides guidance for land planning decisions to minimize noise impacts on the public. Many cities throughout the U.S. also have noise ordinances, which specifies the allowable sound level that can cross property lines. These ordinances can be enforced with local police powers. Equals Europe and Asia equals, several European countries emulated the U.S. national noise control law, Netherlands, France, Spain, and Denmark. 
In some cases unlegislated innovations have led to quieter products exceeding legal mandates. Environmental noise is a special definition in the European Directive 2002 EC Article 10.1. The U.S. activities lag by 10 to 20 years behind most European countries. Russia, China and undeveloped countries lag even further behind. National controls in the U.S. program, after the passage of the NCA, EPA promulgated regulations setting maximum noise limits on a gamut of motor vehicles industrial machinery and household appliances. The agency conducted extensive testing and consulted with industry on the practicality of manufacturing quieter devices. EPA's efforts had an influence on the future of a quieter generation of machines. However, roadway noise and aircraft noise account for the Lion Euro unregistered trademark S share of noise emissions, and the EPA standards for those vehicles preempted states from further regulating. In the case of aircraft noise, FAA had veto power over EPA recommendations, so those standards never pushed the envelope. In the case of motor vehicles, states could not exact a greater standard for enforcement against an individual vehicle, and interstate commerce priorities meant that guidelines for total noise exposure along federally funded highways remained guidelines rather than strict standards. Despite these drawbacks, States and the public at large had a superb weapon in the review of proposed major transportation systems in the form of NEPA and the NCA. In many cases courts were able to enforce the intent of those laws to secure the redesign of roadways and transit systems to provide more noise mitigation or to select an alternative of lesser impact than the original project. In many other cases, the highway agencies simply listen to public input and acoustical scientists before finalizing highway and transit designs. In the case of airport expansions, courts consistently upheld the sovereignty of the FAA over the EPA, in allowing air traffic needs to be met over environmental concerns. Thus airports were required to study impacts of air traffic and facilities expansions and provide detailed noise contour maps but in the final analysis the EPA exposure guidelines only advisory in nature. To respond to the shortcomings of the voluntary guidelines, FAA created a well-funded program to insulate thousands of homes in the vicinity of major airports. The program was based upon computer modeling of alternative insulation strategies, calculated on a house-by-house -house basis. While this program did nothing to mitigate exterior sound levels, it benefited residential interiors significantly. U.S. state and local planning, states passed two different types of legislation starting in the 1970s, echoing the federal lead in noise control. First, many states, with California in the vanguard on a state level, began requiring each municipality and county to have a noise element of the general plan, a substantial noise database and blueprint for making land use decisions in that jurisdiction. The noise element became an integral part of the municipal or county general plan, especially in California. This document compiled a comprehensive set of measurements setting forth existing sound levels, frequently in the form of sound level contour maps to illustrate where varying sound levels fall relative to land use categories. The noise element further states goals for each land use class and even numerical planning standards in order to evaluate future development proposals with regard to noise pollution. Technical analysis of urban highway noise had advanced by the early 1970s to allow intricate analysis of urban planning decisions in order to plan and design urban highways and support associated noise regulations. Cities and counties in the U.S who either fell under state mandates or who voluntarily chose to control noise through land use decisions, were active in categorizing sound levels and seeking development strategies that would minimize the number of persons exposed to harmful levels of motor vehicle noise. Portland, Oregon continues to innovate through its almost 35-year-old noise control office at the city's Bureau of Development Services. Today its code is still one of the only comprehensive codes in the U.S that not only regulates based on a given decibel level, but also includes sound limitations based on the specific pitch or frequency of the given noise. Local noise ordinances in U.S. and Europe, local ordinances are principally aimed at construction noise, power equipment operated by individuals and unmuffled industrial noise penetrating residential areas. 
thousands of U.S. cities have prepared noise ordinances that give noise control officers and police the power to investigate noise complaints and enforcement power to abate the offending noise source, through shutdowns and fines. In the 1970s and early 1980s there was even a professional association for noise enforcement officers called NANCO, National Association of Noise Control Officials. Today only a handful of properly trained noise control officers remain in the United States. A typical noise ordinance sets forth clear definitions of acoustic nomenclature and defines categories of noise generation. Then numerical standards are established, so that enforcement personnel can take the necessary steps of warnings, fines or other municipal police power to rectify unacceptable noise generation. Ordinances have achieved certain successes but they can be thorny to implement. Many European cities are still treating noise as the U.S. did in the 1960s, as a nuisance and not as a numerical standard to be achieved. Equals effects of noise on health and welfare equals. One obligation of a community is to protect its citizens from adverse environmental influences. Noise is one of these factors, noise has documented effects on people, they can be divided into three types. The first type is a physical effect that directly and adversely affects a person's health. Hearing loss and vibration of bodily components are examples. The second type is a physiological effect that adversely affects a person's health. Heightened blood pressure and general stress response are examples. The third type is psychological that adversely affects a person's welfare. Examples are distraction, annoyance, and complaint. The only feasible legal basis for a community a Euro unregistered trademark s right to control noise is based on these adverse health and welfare effects. It is clearly easier to uphold the constitutionality of a noise ordinance in a court of law if it can be shown that it is based on health and welfare concerns. The following is a short list of recognized effects of noise that can be addressed as a reason for a noise ordinance. Excess non-occupational noise exposure, hearing loss on both public and private property, speech interference on both public and private property, audio interference on both public and private property, and sleep interference on mostly private property. Equals some legal considerations in the United States equals, there are several fundamental issues that shape the legality, effectiveness and enforceability of any community noise regulation. Preemption, the federal government has preempted certain areas of noise regulation. They can be found in the Code of Federal Regulations, CFR 201-205 and CFR 211, these laws cover railroads, motor carriers and interstate commerce, construction equipment, motor vehicles, they require product labeling and prohibit tampering with noise control devices. Communities may enact regulations that are no more strict than the federal ones so that local enforcement can be carried out. They can enact curfews and restrict vehicle use in established zones such as residential. Any restriction on interstate motor carriers or railroads may not be for the purpose of noise control. States have police powers granted by the Constitution. They may also enact regulations that are no more strict than federal regulations. They may also preempt local ordinances. California and New Jersey have comprehensive noise codes that communities must meet. Many states require that local ordinances be no more strict than the state code whether such code exists or not. One relatively common preemption is protection of shooting ranges from noise regulation or litigation and right to farm laws that protect agricultural areas from nuisance litigation by encroaching residential areas. Constitutional vagueness, in one case, the United States Supreme Court has said void for vagueness a euro oe it is a basic principle of due process that an enactment is void for vagueness if its prohibitions are not clearly defined. Vague laws offend several important values. First, because we assume that man is free to steer between lawful and unlawful conduct, we insist that laws give the person of ordinary intelligence a reasonable opportunity to know what is prohibited, so that he may act accordingly. Vague laws may trap the innocent by not providing fair warning. Second, if arbitrary and discriminatory enforcement is to be prevented, laws must provide explicit standards for those who apply them. A vague law impermissibly delegates basic policy matters to policemen, judges, 
and juries for resolution on an ad hoc and subjective basis, with the attendant dangers of arbitrary and discriminatory application. Third, but related, where a vague statute abuts upon sensitive areas of basic First Amendment freedoms, it operates to inhibit the exercise of those freedoms in one case. The court declared that numerical sound levels were constitutional as well as the term plainly audible provided it was associated with a reasonable distance. Two requirements for a noise ordinance provision is that, provide fair warning, avoid the possibility of arbitrary enforcement. Free speech, that are constitutional. Freedom of speech. Examples are, slander, hate speech, and falsely calling fire in an assembly. Generally, the time, place, or manner of restrictions must, be content neutral, be narrowly tailored, serve a significant government interest, leave open alternative channels of communication, one example concerned protesters outside an abortion clinic. The U.S. Supreme Court stated that limitations placed on noise-making were necessary to ensure the well-being of patients. Over breath, the U.S. Supreme Court has addressed the issue of too much regulation by defining overbreath as a clear, precise enactment may nevertheless be overbroad if, in its reach, it prohibits constitutionally protected conduct. One means to avoid being overbroad is by having provisions that are specific so that potential violators are given fair warning of what is prohibited. In one case the court ruled that the specificity of the city ordinance regulating school verbal protests was not constitutionally vague, gave fair warning, and was not an invitation to arbitrary enforcement and so was not overbroad, despite the implied limitation on free speech. Nuisance. Nuisances are part of tort law. Torts are civil wrongs whether intentional or accidental from which injury occurs to another. Nuisances can be public or private. A public nuisance is an unreasonable interference with a right common to the general public while a private nuisance is an interference with a person's enjoyment and use of his land. Black's Law Dictionary defines a nuisance as that which annoys and disturbs one in possession of his property, rendering its ordinary use and occupation physically uncomfortable to him. It defines a private nuisance as anything done to the hurt or annoyance of the lands, tenements, or hereditaments of another. As distinguished from public nuisance, it includes any wrongful act which destroys or deteriorates the property of an individual or of a few persons or interferes with their lawful use or enjoyment thereof, or any act which unlawfully hinders them in the enjoyment of a common or public right and causes them a special injury different from that sustained by the general public. The word nuisance is connected closely with the word disturbance which is used extensively in many noise ordinances. The definition below further restricts the meaning to noise disturbance. Nuisance law applies to both community noise regulation as well as private suits brought to court to reduce noise impact. Enforceability, care must be taken in writing a subjective noise provision so that it overcomes the objections listed above. Care must be taken when writing an objective noise provision to make sure that the sound levels are physically realizable. For example, requiring the maximum sound level of an automobile to be 40 decibels, A, or the maximum sound level in a residential zone to be 30 decibels, A, opens the provision to an enforceability challenge. Confiscation. Confiscation is the taking of private property for public use without compensation. It may occur legally when the government seizes property used in illegal practices. Confiscation may occur without an arrest of a person because it is seen as an arrest of property, rather than a person, and the necessity of finding a party guilty is not required in all cases. In many cases, the guilt or innocence of the property owner is irrelevant and the government need not prove anything beyond a reasonable doubt. In order to seize property, there must be either a warrant or a showing of probable cause. The mere showing of probable cause to support the forfeiture of an individual a euro unregistered trademark as property has been a controversial issue. Court opinion varies, but probable cause most often means that the government need only demonstrate reasonable grounds for the belief that the property is properly subject to forfeiture, which can be supported by something less than prima facie proof, but more than mere suspicion. The Peoria Illinois Noise Ordinance allows confiscation of vehicles that emit excessive sound caused by sound-producing devices. Colorado Springs, 
Colorado permits confiscation of sound producing devices. Equals four types of noise regulation equals, fixed sound sources must be treated differently than moving sources. In the former case, the listener is normally well defined while for moving sources it is not. Historically, regulations were enforced by the subjective judgment on an enforcing officer. With the advent of sound measuring equipment, the judgment can be based on measured sound levels. Most comprehensive noise ordinances contain four types of provisions. Subjective emission These regulations allow an official to decide if the output of a sound source is acceptable without recourse to sound measurements and without regard to the presence of a specific listener. Regulations with plainly audible terms on public property as a criterion are examples. Subjective emission These regulations allow an official to decide if the sound received by a listener is acceptable without recourse to sound measurements and without regard for the specific sound power generated by the source regulations with plainly audible or noise disturbance terms on private property as a criterion or examples. Objective emission These regulations require an official to measure the output of a sound source to determine whether it is acceptable without regard to the presence of a specific listener. Regulations with specific maximum sound output levels for motor vehicles are examples. Objective emission These regulations require an official to measure the sound received by a listener to determine whether it is acceptable without regard to the specific sound power generated by the source. Regulations with maximum allowable sound levels on property lines are examples. Equals some definitions used in the United States equals Many communities have definitions that are local to them, such as those defining motor vehicles and sound levels and sound level measurements. Some that have been added to make noise enforcement more specific are listed here. Engine braking device, a compression braking device installed on large motor vehicles to assist in reduction, or control, of vehicle speed. When activated, the engine converts from a power source to a power absorber by converting the engine into an air compressor. Muffler, any device for the abatement of sound emission while permitting the transfer of gas. A muffler is considered to be in good working order if the sound reduction is equal to, or greater than, that of the original equipment. Noise disturbance, any sound or vibration which, may disturb or annoy reasonable persons of normal sensitivities or causes, or tends to cause, an adverse effect on the public health and welfare or Endangers or injures people or endangers or injures personal or real property. This can also be defined as noise nuisance. Place of public entertainment, any location, exterior, or interior, to a building that regularly permits public entrance for entertainment purposes. For this purpose, a euro or a public a euro means citizens of all types, including but not limited to children and private or public employees. Plainly audible sound, any sound for which the information content is unambiguously communicated to the listener, such as, but not limited to, understandable speech, comprehension of whether a voice is raised or normal, repetitive bass sounds, or comprehension of musical rhythms, without the aid of any listening device. Powered model vehicle, any self-propelled airborne, waterborne, or landborne, plane, vessel, or vehicle, which is not designed to carry persons, including, but not limited to, any model airplane, boat, car, or rocket. Real property boundary, an imaginary line along the ground surface, and its vertical extension, which separates the real property owned by one person from that owned by another person, but not including intra-building real property divisions. Sound reproduction device, any device, instrument, mechanism, equipment or apparatus for the amplification of any sounds from any radio, phonograph, stereo, tape player, musical instrument, television, loudspeaker or other sound making or sound producing device or any device or apparatus for the reproduction or amplification of the human voice or other sound. Vibration perception threshold, the minimum ground or structure borne vibrational motion necessary to cause a person of normal sensitivity to be aware of the motion through contact hearing, or through visual observation of moving objects. Equals ordinance provisions for stationary sources in the United States equals, there are three levels of regulation for stationary sound sources. 
the most basic is the general one associated with noise disturbance. It is a very broad subjective emission control that has evolved from earlier disturbance of the peace provisions. Subjectivity can lead to arbitrary enforcement. The next level of regulation is less broad. It is an objective emission control that uses specific levels of sound considered to be a noise disturbance. Arbitrary enforcement is reduced. In both cases, however, the person creating the sound may not be aware that his actions are in violation. The concept that a potential violator should have fair warning that his actions are in violation has led to provisions that address specific noise problems. The sections below list those that are found in community noise ordinances. Air conditioning, heating and pool equipment, this provision is a subjective emission control. An evaluation of the noise disturbance is made at the listener without a sound level meter. This provision is mostly applied in residential zones such as homes, apartments and condominiums. Albuquerque, New Mexico requires that such units the maximum permissible sound levels and recommend that those units be placed away from other residential units or on rooftops to diminish impact. Airport and airport operations, community control of airport created noise is limited to those sounds not related to flight operations. The community is able to control the land use around the airport however. Animals, this provision is a subjective emission control. Most relate to barking dogs and put an upper time limit for continuous sound from them. New Jersey considers a violation if the sound is continuous for more than 5 minutes or intermittent for more than 20 minutes. They also consider it a defense to violation if the animal is provoked to bark. Connect Acute exempts animal sounds while Anchorage Alaska requires that continual violations permit the animal to be taken and put out for adoption. Authorized outdoor discharge of firearms and shooting ranges, this provision contains only a curfew since most states protect shooting ranges from liability for noise disturbance. It can include a curfew requirement and a requirement for a public hearing if expansion of the range is desired. The provision may prohibit other weapons such as rocket-propelled projectiles but may exempt unpowered weapons such as arrows. South Carolina requires that a sign stating shooting range noise area be placed on all primary roads. Arizona places a curfew from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. It also allows a trade-off between the number of events and the maximum permitted sound level. New York also trades off overall levels with the duration of the sounds. Colorado declared that noise restrictions on shooting ranges is a detriment to public health, welfare, and morale. Condominiums and apartments, this provision is a subjective emission control. It is designed to limit the noise disturbance between living units as defined by an enforcement official. One criterion used to evaluate that disturbance is use of plainly audible but at the location of the listener instead of at a specific distance. However, Charlotte, North Carolina limits indoor levels to 55 decibels, a, between 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and 5 decibels less at other times, but only from sound reproducing devices. Salt Lake Valley Health Department, Minneapolis, Minnesota, and Albuquerque, New Mexico use levels to existing ambient to define a violation. Albuquerque, NM and Omaha, Nebraska require that intruding sounds not be audible. Burlington, Vermont requires that renters be supplied with a city noise ordinance. Construction, this provision can be both a subjective emission control and an objective emission control. Normally there are daily curfews and in some case weekend curfews. The subjective aspect is to prevent noise disturbance in the adjacent community. The objective aspect is to control the sound output of specific machines. There are four major sources of side noise, direct sound from continually operating equipment such as air compressors, intermittent sound from equipment such as jackhammers, three, backup alarms and hauling equipment such as trucks. Air compressor noise is regulated by CFR 204 and backup alarms are regulated by CFR 1926. Boston, Massachusetts, Section 16-26.4 permits construction on weekdays between 7 a.m. and 6 p.m. Madison, Wisconsin limits sound levels to 88 decibels, a, at 50 feet. 
Miami, Florida considers the noise a noise disturbance if it occurs between 6 p.m. and 8 a.m. during the week and any time on Sunday. Dallas, Texas, permits construction in residential zones from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on weekdays, from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Saturdays and holidays, and prohibits construction on Sundays. Albuquerque, New Mexico has a more complex control. It prohibits construction and demolition within 500 feet of noise-sensitive properties if the equipment sound control devices are less effective than the original equipment and if noise mitigation measures are not used when the levels exceed 90 decibels or more than 80 decibels during the day for three days. Domestic and commercial power tools, this provision is a subjective emission control with a curfew. It is used in residential zones well as in commercial areas abutting residential zones. Portland, Oregon has several ways to handle these tools. They separate outdoor and indoor use to different maximum levels at the property line. They have a night curfew and separate five horsepower tools from higher power tools. Madison WI has similar HP restrictions. Albuquerque, New Mexico restricts locations to more than 500 feet from residential and noise sensitive zones. Dallas, Texas, SEC 30 2 exempts lawn maintenance tools during daylight hours. Green Bay, Wisconsin exempts snow removal tools. Explosives, firearms, impulsive sources, and similar devices, this provision is a subjective emission control with a curfew. It is for impulsive sound sources that are not associated with construction activities or shooting ranges. Many communities use the maximum permissible sound levels criterion, with a correction for the character of the sound. Illinois sets maximum blasting levels by land use zone and in three time categories. Portland, Oregon limits levels to 100 decibels from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. and 80 decibels from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. Fracking operations, hydraulic fracturing operations generate site sound as well as vehicle sound and several different provisions are required to control it. Federal law regulates the levels of certain site machinery. A subjective emission control or objective emission control can be applied to surrounding neighborhoods. See maximum permissible sound levels. Motor vehicle sound is mostly off-site so vehicle noise regulations are applicable. See motor vehicles on a public right-of-way. The state of New York has announced a statewide ban on such operations. Buffalo, New York and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania have announced a ban. Colorado has numerous activities to stop fracking. Funerals, this is a subjective emission control to reduce the excessive shouting and protests that can surround funeral proceedings. It makes use of the plainly audible term and so adds a distance criterion. There are certain groups, particularly those that object to involvement in foreign wars, who believe it is an obligation to disrupt and picket funerals especially those of deceased military veterans. This provision must not infringe on constitutionally protected free speech. Illinois H. 720 ILCS 5 266 has a comprehensive provision covering more aspects of this event than noise. They failed to use a euro or a plainly audible a euro which is narrower than a euro or a euro. Utah, Section 76-9-108 restricts disruptive activity to beyond 200 feet. Loading and unloading operations, this provision is a subjective emission control with a curfew. Operations in commercial facilities can impact adjacent residential zones. Los Angeles, California places a curfew on such operations between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. but only if the source is within 200 feet of a residence. Chicago, Illinois permits night operations unless they create a noise disturbance. Hammond, Indiana prohibits noise disturbance between 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. Maximum permissible sound pressure levels, this provision is an objective emission control. It requires the measurement of sound levels at or beyond a property line and its vertical extension. There are several methods for implementing such a provision, it may not permit any exceedance or may permit exceedance only for a percentage of the measurement period. It may require the measurement method to be instantaneous such as decibel, A, or time averaged, such as energy equivalent level. It may be a fixed level limit, such as 55 decibels, A, 
or it may be a level relative to the ambient sound, such as 5 dB, A, above the ambient. It may require a measurement of the frequency spectrum, such as 1 octave bands, or A weighting, such as dB, A. It may define different maximum levels based on zoning criteria, such as residential, commercial, or industrial. It may define different maximum levels based on time of day or day of week, such as reduced maxima during night hours or on weekends. It may require reduction of maximum levels based on the character of the sound, such as intermittent or impulsive. It may exempt certain classes of sound sources, such as shooting ranges, farm equipment, emergency equipment, railroads, or licensed activities. Most noise ordinances set maximum levels for two time periods, day and night. San Diego sets three periods, day, evening, and night and exempts industrial zones from time-based restrictions. Seattle, Washington sets two time periods but changes 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. on weekends and holidays. Several states have maximum permissible land use sound levels in decibel, a. Most have day and night periods and three use categories, residential, commercial and industrial. Washington sets maximum levels in decibel, a, but allows 5 decibels, a, more if the sound is only 15 minutes in an hour, or 10 decibels, a, for 5 minutes in an hour. Numerous cities have fixed levels, permitting excess levels for short times while others use LEC. Los Angeles, California uses a relative level with a stated but presumed ambient. New York City, New York requires LEC measurements to be made over one hour. Atlanta, Georgia limits impulsive sound to 100 decibels, C, at property lines, while most reduce the maximum level by 5 decibels for pure tones and impulsive sounds. Motor vehicle or motorboat repairs and testing, this provision is a subjective emission control with a curfew. If the activity is done in a residential zone, the domestic tools provision can be applied for the repairs, but this provision also is used for the testing phase of any repairs. Los Angeles, California covers this violation in three ways. The first is application of the noise disturbance provision in residential districts between the hours of 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. The second is being plainly audible at a distance of 150 feet or more in residential districts between the hours of 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. The third is exceeding the presumed ambient by 5 decibels. Hammond, Indiana prohibits this activity as a noise disturbance at any time. Noise disturbance prohibited, this provision is a subjective emission control. This provision is generic in that it covers all events that are considered disturbing by a listener, with or without measurement. The strength of this provision is that it covers situations not contemplated in a noise ordinance and can be used as backup for more specific provisions. The weakness is that it may not give fair warning, may lead to arbitrary enforcement on the part of the regulator, or permit unreasonable demands by a listener. Noise sensitive zones, this provision is a subjective emission control. It is used to reduce levels of both stationary and vehicular sound sources around hospitals, schools, and other noise-sensitive locations. To provide fair warning visible signs must be posted. It is possible to have an extensive list. For example, if churches are on the list and the community has many of them, signage, compliance, and enforcement can be a problem. In modern hospital environments, helicopter sound is exempt. Places of public entertainment, this provision is an objective emission control. It regulates the sight of the sound source while the sound reproduction devices section regulates the devices that create the sound. It can regulate the sound levels received by involuntary listeners in the surrounding community as well as the sound levels received by voluntary listeners. If the latter aspect is incorporated, limiting internal sound levels often resolves community noise impact. Los Angeles requires warning signs and limits noise exposure to 95 decibels, a at any position normally occupied. Seattle, Washington Section 25.08.501 considers the sound emitted to be in violation if the sound is plainly audible within a dwelling from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. The need for a sound level meter is avoided. 
Chicago, Illinois Section 11-4-2805 limits received sound levels to 55 decibels, a, inside a residential dwelling unit but if the ambient is greater, the limit is 65 decibels, a, if outdoors, the limit is conversational level at 100 feet from the property line. If the building is set back 20 feet from the property line, the allowable level is 84 decibels, a. Both of Chicago are Euro unregistered trademark S limits aptly from 10 p.m. to 8 a.m. Salt Lake Health Department, UT Section 4.5.11. V. Sets the limit at 95 decibels, a. At a position that would normally be occupied by a patron and 100 decibels, a. At other positions. They also require a sign stating warning, sound levels on this premise may cause permanent hearing damage. Hearing protection is available. Anchorage, Alaska sets maximum levels for any patron at 90 decibels, a. Powered unmanned vehicles or engines, this provision is a subjective emission control with a curfew. It has been used to regulate the sound of model aircraft on both private and public property. It applies to airborne, waterborne, and landborne, unmanned vehicles. It makes no distinction between model vehicles and full size unmanned vehicles. It applies also the to the engines of those vehicles. Most regulations pertain to private unmanned vehicles, normally restricted to local open fields. The development of drones with microphones, cameras, and GPS has opened the door to commercial use over wider private and public properties. Since federal preemption of drone use will likely occur, it is important for this provision to make the distinction. Salt Lake Health Department limits activity to 800 feet from a dwelling between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m., or if it cases a noise disturbance. Atlanta, Georgia, uses the plainly audible criterion across a residential property line, on a public property from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. on weekdays or from 10 p.m. to 10 a.m. on weekends or holidays for any sound source. Propane cannons, this provision is a subjective emission control with a curfew. A propane cannon is used to keep animals and birds from destroying commercial crops. In large fields, many are used and fired as frequent intervals. The sound levels are equivalent to the firing of a small artillery cannon. The provision may contain requirements that limit the number of cannons permitted in a specific area and the number of firings per hour for each cannon. Many states have a right to farm act that limits nuisance litigation. Florida stated that it was a purpose of their act to protect reasonable agricultural activities conducted on farmland from nuisance suits. They also added a section that limited expand of operations without consideration of noise. Fairfax County, VA require agricultural operation to meet maximum land use regulations and prohibit unnecessary noise. British Columbia Ministry of Agriculture have developed a comprehensive set of rules for cannon use. Public address systems, this provision is a subjective emission control. It can contain a plainly audible term or a curfew. It is applied to commercial facilities using a sound system to deliberately propagate mostly speech, but also music. Most cities have provisions relevant to this subject. Lakewood, Colorado used plainly audible as a regulatory tool and prohibits the sounding of bells, or chimes from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. Charlotte, North Carolina, for limits levels to 60 decibels, a, at 50 feet from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. and 50 decibels, a, at other times. Indianapolis, Indiana addresses broadcasts from aircraft. Connecticut exempts bells, carillons, and chimes from religious facilities. Sound reproduction devices, this provision is subjective emission control. It may contain a numerical level or a plainly audible term and a curfew. It is applied to specific sources of sound as opposed to any location at which the sound is created. It is applied primarily to amplified sound sources. Older provisions listed several items such as televisions, phonographs, etc. Changing the title to the above addresses the real issue and allows for novel sound production devices. Numerous communities have provisions for these devices. Many use plainly audible as their criterion, such as Omaha, Nebraska and Buffalo, NY. Stadiums and outdoor music festivals, this provision can be either a subjective or objective emission control with a curfew. 
the subjective aspect relates to noise disturbance in the local community. The objective aspect limits the acceptable sound level in the local community. Illinois exempts certain stadiums and exempts festivals, parades, or street fairs. Colorado Spring Colorado has similar exemptions, but limits the sound levels to 80 decibels a, at residential locations. Stationary emergency signaling devices, this provision is in emission control with a list of devices that are exempt. It can have a term that limits the time periods in which emergency alarms may be tested. It can have a term that limits the activation time of burglar or fire alarms. Chicago, Illinois limits the time for tests to 4 minutes between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Oregon prohibits sound when an emergency vehicle is stationary. Stationary non-emergency non-safety signaling devices, this provision is an emission control that limits the activation period of alarms and restricts activation to a specific time of day or day of week. Los Angeles, California prohibits the sounding of the signal can be heard at 200 feet or more. Chicago, Illinois considers the sound to be a noise disturbance in residential areas if the sound exceeds five minutes in any hour. Steam whistles are exempt. Albuquerque, New Mexico restricts levels to 5 decibels over the ambient at a property line and applies maximum permissible residential level as well as plainly audible restrictions at night. Street sales, this provision is a subjective emission control with a curfew. Boston, Massachusetts prohibits street sales near schools or churches if there is a a euro e disturbance of a peer euro. Hammond, Indiana places a curfew between 6 p.m. and 9 a.m. Tampering, this provision prevents the modification of muffling devices that increase the emitted sound. It can also be used to prevent the commercial sale of such mufflers. Most states and communities have prohibitions on tampering with noise reduction devices whether stationary or moving. Salt Lake County Health Department prohibits modifications of mufflers that increase sound levels and prohibits tampering with noise rating labels. See section below on adequate mufflers. Vibration, this provision is a subjective emission control. Noise disturbance caused by vibration comes in three forms. One is contact with vibrating surfaces, the second in auditory, and the third is the observation of surrounding objects' movement. Objectively regulating vibration is difficult so this provision makes use of the vibration perception threshold. Railroad calls vibration is preempted by federal law. Chicago, Illinois uses the perception threshold method. Dallas, Texas requires measurement of low-frequency vibration. Maryland uses the definition of noise to include sound and vibration at subaudible frequencies. Wind turbines, the sound created by wind turbines is caused by the blade rotation similar to aircraft propellers. Because the rotation rate is low, the frequency is also low, but the large size of many can result in disturbing sound levels, particularly in high wind areas. Most local control is done by advantageous site planning. New Hampshire sets a sound level limit of 55 decibels when measured at the site property line, allowing for exceptional events such as storms. Studies have declared that wind noise can have a negative effect on health. Equals ordinance provisions for moving vehicles in the United States equals, stationary sources have fixed positions, so it is possible to define the listeners and therefore emission controls are appropriate. Motor vehicles are moving sources so it is not possible to define any specific listeners so emission controls are appropriate. There are exceptions to this distinction construction equipment, and some recreation vehicles, move within a bounded area and can be considered to be time-varying fixed sources. Standing motor vehicles can radiate sufficient sound to create noise disturbance. These must be treated by specific provisions. Adequate mufflers or sound dissipation devices, this provision is an objective emission control. Unlike the tampering provision, this is specific to motor vehicles. It requires that a vehicle muffler not create more sound than the original equipment which has been measured. It prohibits any modification or replacement that increases the sound emission beyond that of the original equipment. It prohibits the sale of mufflers that do not meet original equipment standards. 
Many states have requirements that a muffler shall be in good working order which is not specific enough. California requires that a retail seller that sells a product in violation of the muffler regulation must install a replacement muffler that meets the regulation and must reimburse the purchaser for the expense of replacement. Airboats and hovercraft, this provision is both an objective emission control and a subjective emission control. It can set a maximum sound level at a specified distance. It can have a curfew. It can be based on noise disturbance in the community. It can also require the use of ear protectors on passengers. Unlike motorboats, the sound generators on these vehicles are airborne, resulting in more noise impact. Florida requires a maximum level of 90 dB, A. Mena has three levels, operating, operating test and stationary test. Engine braking devices, this provision is in emission control. It can restrict brake use for only safety purposes and by defining restricted areas. It can require that mufflers be maintained to keep emitted sound to that of the original equipment. Common terminology is Jake Brakes after the Jacobs Company. Milwaukee, Wisconsin prohibits use within city limits. Portland, Oregon prohibits use within 200 feet of a residence. Albuquerque, New Mexico post signs requiring proper mufflers. Motorboats, this provision is both an objective emission control and a subjective emission control. Because they are moving sources, objective controls are appropriate for measurements on open waterways. Many motorboats operate in bounding areas, such as small lakes or canals, with adjacent residential areas. In this case, emission controls are appropriate. California, Portland OR, and Seattle Washington require emission measurements to be made at the shoreline. Many states require emission measurements to be made at 50 feet. Motor vehicle horns or signaling devices, this provision is both a prohibition and an emission control. It limits to use for safety warning only it limits the sound level to a specific level at a prescribed distance. This provision is intended to limit horn use to safety and to limit the use of excessively loud air horns or rumbler or howler horns. California prohibits a person operating a motor vehicle to wear a headset or earplugs on both ears. Oregon prohibits signaling sound when an emergency vehicle is stationary or returning from an emergency. Motor vehicles on a public right-of-way, this provision is an objective emission control. It applies maximum sound levels to various categories of moving vehicles and for several vehicle speeds. It is the backbone of vehicle sound emission regulations. It generally requires a measurement of a weighted sound level of a moving vehicle at a specific distance from the vehicle path. This provision has level restrictions on trucks over 10,000 GVW used locally and in interstate commerce. It also covers motorcycles of two horsepower ratings, mopeds, and all other vehicles on public rights of way. The federal government has set maximum levels for heavy trucks used in interstate commerce share and for motorcycles. Most states and many cities have maximum limits and they generally agree with federal standards where they apply. The most common speed division is 35 miles per hour. Motor vehicle racing events, this provision is an objective emission control. It can define the method of vehicle operation that is used to define the maximum permitted sound level. It can have a curfew. Some states exempt motor vehicle racing events from noise disturbance litigation or prosecution. Arizona exempts racing motorcycles from maximum sound levels and muffler requirements. Illinois Section 35.903 had detailed regulations on racing vehicles it required a 14 decibels reduction in sound output, limited sound output at half meter to 115 decibels, A, and no more than 105 decibels, A, at 50 feet. Motor Vehicle Sound Systems, this provision is both an objective emission control, a subjective emission control, and a subjective emission for vehicles on a public right of way. The first part limits the system sound level at a fixed distance. The second part uses the plainly audible definition for limiting the sound output. The third part uses the noise disturbance definition to limit the impact on neighboring properties and can be applied within public transportation. The most restrictive application of the plainly audible laws says that the sound cannot be audible to anyone other than the vehicle occupants. 
there are numerous state and community restrictions on vehicle sound systems. Louisiana prohibits the system from emitting sound outside of a vehicle. Richmond, California also prohibits the sound from being audible outside the vehicle. Oregon prohibits sound systems being plainly audible at 50 feet. California prohibits sound systems that can be heard at 50 feet. Colorado Springs, Colorado, requires a measurement at 25 feet beyond the private property line or 25 feet from the source on public property. It does not specify a limiting level. In Lakewood, Colorado it must not be plainly audible beyond 25 feet. In Los Angeles, California, it cannot be audible beyond 200 feet. In Seattle, Washington, it must not be plainly audible at 75 feet. Chicago restricts levels to less than clearly audible at 75 feet. Minneapolis, Minnesota restricts levels to less than audible at 50 feet. Albuquerque, New Mexico restricts plainly audible to 25 feet, but also applies their land use limits. Cincinnati, Ohio restricts plainly audible to 50 feet. Dallas, Texas prohibits sound or vibration that is detectable at 30 feet, or that violates the land use regulations. Houston, Texas applies land use restrictions. Omaha, Nebraska states the sound must not be audible at 100 feet. Hammond, Indiana restricts plainly audible to 25 feet. New Jersey states the sound must not be plainly audible at 50 feet between 8 a.m. and 10 p.m. and not plainly audible at 25 feet between 10 p.m. and 8 a.m. Florida states the sound must not be plainly audible at 25 feet, but exempts business and political systems. Oregon and Tennessee state that the sound must not be plainly audible beyond 50 feet, as does Fairbanks, a.k. Rhode Island specifically addresses low-frequency sound that can be heard 20 feet from a closed vehicle or 100 feet otherwise. Salt Lake County Health Department, UT considers the sound a violation if it is plainly audible on a common carrier. Austin, Texas states it must not be audible at 30 feet. Motor Vehicle Theft Alarms, this provision is a subjective emission control with only an operational time limit. Los Angeles, California requires silencing in five minutes. New York City, New York, requires automatic shut-off after ten minutes and a prominent display of the local precinct number and telephone number. Boston, Massachusetts considers it a violation if the alarm is plainly audible at 200 feet and is on more than five minutes. Other states and communities have automatic shut-off times from 10 to 15 minutes. 10 minutes. Some communities have banned such alarms. Motor vehicle tire squeal and street drag racing, this provision is a subjective emission control. It is based on the noise disturbance from drag racing and tire squealing on public rights of way. Illinois prohibits such activities. Hammond, Indiana prohibits such activity if it creates a noise disturbance. Railroads, railroad activity is subject to federal regulations. Most communities do not attempt to regulate train sound. The level of train horns permitted by the Federal Railroad Administration sufficiently high that community impact occurs. One method to alleviate this sound is to have a community establish a quiet zone where the rail crossings meet federal safety standards so that horn use is not needed. Recreational off-road vehicles This provision is both an objective emission control and a subjective emission control with a curfew. It can apply to both public and private properties. Since these vehicles can move in large open areas, an objective control, limiting maximum sound levels at a fixed distance, is appropriate. Since they also can move in bounded areas near residences, a subjective control is appropriate. Numerous states and cities have emission controls measured at 50 feet. The most common level is 82 decibels, A which is similar to that for motor vehicles on public rights of way. Colorado Springs, Colorado requires a minimum distance of 660 feet from residences. Portland, Oregon requires the area must be designated for recreational vehicle use. Salt Lake Health Department, UT, requires off-highway vehicles to be at least 800 feet from a dwelling during the day and has a curfew from 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. They prohibit any noise disturbance and require sound levels to the less than 96 decibels, a, at 50 feet. 
recreational snowmobiles. This provision is both an objective emission control and a subjective emission control with a curfew. It can apply to both public and private properties. Since these vehicles can move in large open areas, an objective control, limiting maximum sound levels at a fixed distance is appropriate. Since they also can move in bounded areas near residences, a subjective control is appropriate. Numerous states and communities have objective controls. The most common maximum level is 78 decibels, a. Federal law regulates snowmobiles on federal property at 78 decibels, a. So states and communities are free to regulate snowmobile sound levels on their property. Lincoln NE limits levels to 78 decibels, a. Maine exempts snowmobiles at sanctioned racing events. Illinois does also. Refuse collection vehicles, this provision is an objective emission control and a subjective control. It can place a maximum sound level at a specific distance for the loudest operation. It can set a curfew, or it can be based on noise disturbance in residential zones. Los Angeles, California has a time limit that applies only within 200 feet of any residential building. Chicago, Illinois considers any noise it a noise disturbance if the activity occurs between 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. Salt Lake City, Utah considers it a noise disturbance if the activities occur between 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. and closer than 800 feet from a dwelling. Atlanta, Georgia, 5, prohibits collection between 9 p.m. and am on a weekend day or legal holiday, except by permit. In Maryland, Refuse collection is exempt during daytime hours and must meet maximum land use levels, 55 decibels, a, in residential zones at night. Standing motor vehicles, this provision is a subjective emission control. It sets a time limit on engine activity. It can also place a curfew on any engine activity. e. In Salt Lake City, Utah, it is considered a noise disturbance if the operation lasts more than 15 minutes. Dallas, Texas applies the code to vehicles over 14,000 GVWR. They must be more than 300 feet from a residential zone and there is a 10-minute maximum. They also provide a list of idling vehicles that are exempt from prosecutions such as buses or active concrete trucks. Hammond, Indiana limits operation to 3 minutes in an hour for vehicles over 14,000 GVWR in either public or private property. It exempts buses and taxis. Massachusetts allows idling no more than five minutes. Building codes, in the case of construction of new apartments, condominiums, hospitals and hotels, many U.S. states and cities have stringent building codes with requirements of acoustical analysis, in order to protect building occupants from exterior noise sources and sound generated within the building itself. With regard to exterior noise, the codes usually require measurement of the exterior acoustic environment in order to determine the performance standard required for exterior building skin design. The architect can work with the acoustical scientist to arrive at the best cost-effective means of creating a quiet interior. The most important elements of design of the building skin are usually, glazing, roof material, corking standards, chimney baffles, exterior door design, mail slots, attic ventilation ports and mounting of through-the-wall air conditioners. A special case of building skin design arises in the case of aircraft noise, where the FAA has funded extensive work in residential retrofit. Regarding sound generated inside the building, there are two principal types of transmission. First, airborne sound travels through walls or floor ceiling assemblies and can emanate from either human activities in adjacent living spaces or from mechanical noise within the building systems. Human activities might include voice, amplified sound systems or animal noise. Mechanical systems are elevator systems, boilers, refrigeration or air conditioning systems, generators and trash compactors. Since many of these sounds are inherently loud, the principle of regulation is to require the wall or ceiling assembly to meet certain performance standards, which allows considerable attenuation of the sound level reaching occupants. The second type of interior sound is called impact insulation class transmission. This effect arises not from airborne transmission, but rather from transmission of sound through the building itself. The most common perception of IIC noise is from footfall of occupants in living spaces above. 
this type of noise is somewhat more difficult to abate, but consideration must be given to isolating the floor assembly above or hanging the lower ceiling on resilient channel. Commonly a performance standard of IIC equal to 50 is specified in building codes. California has generally led the U.S. in widespread application of building code requirements for sound transmission. Accordingly, the level of protection for building occupants has increased markedly in the last several decades. U.S. Occupational Safety Regulations The U.S. Occupational Safety and Health Administration has established maximum noise levels for occupational exposure, beyond which mitigation measures or personal protective equipment is required. In recent years, by quiet programs and initiatives have arisen in an effort to combat occupational noise exposures. These programs promote the purchase of quieter tools and equipment and encourage manufacturers to design quieter equipment. See also, A weighting scale regarding the unit normally used in noise regulation, aircraft noise for a broader discussion of aircraft noise regulation, loud music, by quiet, general, noise control, noise health effects, noise pollution. References External links, US EPA Noise Pollution, General Information and Resources, Airport Noise Law, U.S., Addressing Wind Turbine Noise A Primer for Understanding Noise Control Ordinances, Noise Pollution Clearing House, U.S., Acoustical Society of America, American Institute of Architects, National Council of Acoustical Consultants, Business and Institutional Furniture Manufacturers Association, Rutgers Noise Technical Assistance Center, Got Noise? Working Towards Limiting Traffic Noise from I-95 in SW Connecticut. NIOSH by Quiet Topic Page.